Okay, we continue further after discussing permutation and combination. So, we have a theorem here and this theorem one point one three. So this theorem says that the number of the number of ways to choose K objects out of N distinguishable object is n k equal to n divided by k factorial that is n factorial divided by k factorial n minus k factorial. So, this is actually a combination. So, there is a definition 1.11 and it says that n choose k for an integer that is n is greater than or equal to 0 we define n k equal to n factorial k factorial n minus k factorial 0 where k is from 0 1 up to n uh, otherwise. Now, uh, we move to next thing. Uh, this is uh, all the counting methods we use when we have um, circling without replacement. Let us see what happened if we can replace circling with replacement. Okay. Now, in that case, we have sampling with replacement. So, for that uh, we address sampling with replacement in this section. Now, <coughs> for this we have a theorem, theorem is uh, 1.14 1 and theorem says that uh, given M distinguishable objects objects uh, there are M power N ways to choose with replacement. An order sample of n objects.
Okay, uh, example, to understand this is example 1.34. This example says that there are 2 power 10 equal to 1024 binary sequence of length 10. Okay, there's another example to understand this. For example, 3.5, uh, the letter alphabets that start from A through Z. How many alphabets there are? There are 26 alphabets. Can produce how many letters of uh, four letter words? because there are 26 words and you have to make 4 letters so it becomes equal to uh, 4, 5, 6, 9, 7, 6. Let me rewrite here. Four, five, six, nine, seven, six letters. A four letter word. Words, okay. <coughs> So it's very simple because there are 26 uh, alphabets and we want to look at how, how the possible words of four letter can be made. So we have to use the theorem 1.14 and it says that uh, we have to calculate m power n. So here n is 4, m is 26. So this is the number. Now there is another theorem. Theorem 1.15, it says that for n repetition of a sequence of a sub experiment, not sequence, sorry. Repetition of uh, a sub experiment with sample space S that is start from S zero up to outcomes have M minus one outcomes. There are m power n possible observation sequences. So, uh, this theorem tell us that either you have a sample with replacement or you have a repetition of sub experiment. This is the same phenomenon. Okay. So, you, you get the same result. Move to article one point nine. This is independent trial.
independent trunks means that uh, we apply the we want to apply the counting on independent trials and see how it work so we have a theorem here is 1.18 this theorem th says that the probability of n zero failure and n one success success is in n is equal to n zero plus n one independent trial is So, there are two possibilities, either you have a failure, either you have success. So, if we uh, calculate the number of failures and success and we represent it, it by n, so how you calculate the probability in that case? So, uh, to calculate the probability, because before this we uh, just uh, look at the counting methods, now we want to use those counting methods for calculating the probability. So, this is the first one if we want to calculate the probability of s n naught comma n 1 so in that case this is easily calculated by n combination n 1 times 1 minus probability of n minus n 1 times the probability of n 1 or in other words this is written in success you can write this trial probability in terms of failure that n and not 1 minus p power n naught and p is n minus n naught so these two are the bo both the same formulas one is written in success first one second is written in failure Let us uh, do an example and example is um, 1.40. This example is based on the resistor test that we uh, do in example 19. In example uh, 19 if you remember you have three machines B1, B2, B3 and they are producing some resistors and nominal value uh, if you remember the acceptable probability of the resistor you calculated in that example was 0.78 now here is the question for same question uh, same uh, example if we um, randomly we randomly um, tested resistor you tested uh, resistor 100 resistor actually if we randomly tested 100 resistors okay uh, what is probability what is the probability ability of ti the event that I resist test acceptable ok uh, because uh, we have to test 100 resistors so this means that uh, if we look at the solution, so this i is between 0 and 100, this is the first thing, okay. Now, this range is between 0 and 100. Now, we have to find the probability of test, i a test and we want to know that it is successful or not. There are 100 total resistor, we have to test a resistor, 
can be anyone. We know the successful probability is uh, 0.78, so we use the theorem 1.18 and we just put in the probability here and what about the remaining failure is 1 minus 0.78 and we just put 100 minus i. So, this is the formula we can use to solve and to look at to calculate the probability of resistor that works fine. Okay, um, now we move to uh, this means that we can use counting uh, techniques to calculate the probability. Now, we move to um, another uh, topic that is of most importance is known as um, article 1.10 and is known as the reliability. Reliability problems. Now, I told you in previous uh, lecture that uh, normally uh, we use the probability for reliability analysis. So, let us see how reliability problems are solved in um, real words and how we use the probability. So, uh, now uh, what happened? Uh, we have uh, a system that has some components connected in it. So, there are two possibilities that component is connected with the system. One is known as component in series. So, this means that either you have a system and you, that system has some components that are connected in series. So, how they are connected? For example, this is first component, uh, say w 1, w 2 they are connected in series. So, you have to calculate the reliability means that uh, how much uh, confident you are that uh, this component is uh, operate successfully. Okay? So, this is the reliability now. So, in that case, now when we have to calculate the probability, we can say that okay, we want to calculate the probability. So, in that case, you have to calculate the probability of joint probability of all these components that is as you know that uh, because these are not um, these are in series. So, what you do if a uh, probability of uh, each component success is p. So, in that case total probability becomes p times p times p and so on if there are three components. So, it becomes power 3 if there are n components. So, this is the way you can calculate the success probability when components are connected in series. Now, the next one is uh, when components uh, in parallel in parallel how you calculate the probability because we know that how to calculate the component probability in series. Now, in parallel if I draw a parallel, so we have same input to each component. So, the, this is a block diagram of parallel combination. So, after that we have an output. So, this is a component in parallel. So, again if uh, each component has a probability of success is p how you calculate the probability in this case. So, it is very easy to calculate the probability. How we do that? Now, we have to calculate what is the probability that all components are fail. So, in that case, because to mm, uh, fail this whole system, we need to uh, calculate the failure probability of w 1, w 2, w 3. Okay? then whole system is collapsed. In series, if one component is collapsed, all the components are collapsed. Okay? But in parallel, we have to look for each component individually. So, to calculate this probability is a bit tricky. So, what we do? We just calculate the probability that all the components are failure. So, in that case, 
all three components need to be failure. So, in that case, this means that probability we have to calculate component of W1, W2 and W3. Then it is possible that the whole system is failure. So, in that case, if I calculate the probability, because um, uh, probability is P1, so what is the compon uh, complement of uh, W1 probability is 1 minus P. So, this becomes 1 minus P times 1 minus P times 1 minus P or in other words, it becomes 1 minus P power 3 because there are 3 components. If there are n components, I have to put n here. Okay. Now, but the thing is we have to calculate the success probability in parallel combination. So, in that case, how we do that? We use that probability of W can be calculated as 1 minus probability of W complement. This is the way we can calculate the probability. So, when we do do that, I have to put 1 minus 1 minus p power 3. So, this is the probability of success when you are, you have 3 components in parallel. Okay. So, uh, it is very obvious if uh, components are series. So, your probability uh, reliability is very low. If components are in parallel, your reliability is higher. Okay. Now, uh, let us do an example on this reliability analysis. So, example is uh, 1.44 and it says that an operation consists of two redundant parts. So, there are two redundant parts. The first part part has two components in series that is W 1 and W 2 and the second part Second part has two components in series. W three and W four. Okay, all components success. succeed with probability p equal to 0.9 draw a diagram of of the operation So, uh, an operation consists of two redundant parts. So, there are two redundant parts. Each part has two components that are in series. So, there are two redundant parts in an operation. Okay. Now, we have to draw the diagram of the operation and calculate the probability. probability uh, that that the operation succeeds. Now, this is question we have to answer. Now, there are two redundant portions. So, for example, we have this is the first redundant portion, this is the second redundant portion. E redundant portion has two components. They are connected in series. 
okay now first has w1 and w2 second has w3 and w4 now these two are connected so this is the diagram that we extract from the explanation of the example statement now we can solve this as these two are in series and then the parallel so we can solve this into that we can make here a component after solving the series both two so it becomes w5 and it becomes w6 now the next thing is uh, we have to solve the um, so what is w5 actually w5 is equal to w1 times w2 w6 is equal to w3 times w4 now we have to calculate the probability so if i solve here probability of w5 is equal to probability of w1 and w2 so each component probability is given to us is 0.9 so this become 0.9 square clear probability of w6 again probability of w3 and w4 this is again 0.9 square clear now these two are in parallel so we have to calculate the overall reliability of the operation because these two are in parallel so this means that we have to solve this so in that case probability of overall operation is equal to 1 minus uh, probability of wc so how to calculate the probability of wc wc is the probability of the inverse of these two components okay so in that case this uh, if i go to next so first we calculate w5 that is equal to 0.9 square then we calculate w6 that is 0.9 square again because these two are series now for parallel we have to calculate the w that is actually equal to 1 minus p of w complement this is the formula so for w complement how we calculate it so then we have to calculate the probability of uh, five complement and this becomes five component complements becomes 1 minus 0 0.81 okay similarly probability of uh, sorry probability of w6 complement is equal to 1 minus 0.81 okay now uh, probability of um, w complement this is equal to probability of w5 complement times probability of w6 complement that becomes 1 minus 0 0.8 square 8 1 square okay uh, now overall probability of success of this event is equal to 1 minus 1 minus 0 0.81 square Okay, when we solve this, it becomes uh, 0.964. As you see that when we introduce the redundant component, the success rate increased. If you look at the series component, success rate is only 0.9. When we introduce the random uh, component, success rate is uh, goes up to 96%. Okay, which is a good number.
Okay, G. Uh, <coughs> now, um, if we uh, look at some uh, problems here. Now, this is the end of our chapter number one. Now, we have to move to chapter number two. Okay. So, now uh, the chapter number two is uh, about random variables. Now, random variables uh, is basically is used to uh, have um, a number that uh, has some random values assigned to it. Okay. So, what we do here, we instead of uh, writing the probabilities or outcomes, we assign a random variable to re represent the outcomes of the experiment. Now, there are two types of random variables. One is known as discrete random variables. Second is continuous random variables. So, there are two types, one is the discrete one and other is the continuous random variable. Now, if we okay. So, we discuss all these topics okay, we discussed uh, these topics Okay, uh, these are some definitions that we have for discrete uh, random variables and um, in chapter 2 actually uh, we in latest edition is chapter number 3, but in previous edition is chapter number 2 and here we discuss actually um, uh, what is uh, um, we assign a number to the outcomes. Uh, in the sample space and we call it that number as a random variable. So, when we observe one of three numbers, we refer to the observation as a random variables. Uh, in our notation, the name of the random variable always capital letter. Okay. So, you have um, capital letter that represent the random variable uh, in set of possible values of x in the range of x. Okay. Now, since we often consider more than one random variables at a time, we define the range of random variable by letter s with a subscript in the name of the random variable. S x means that uh, you are talking about random variable x here. Okay. So, this uh, actually x represent the sample space that related to random variable x. Similarly, y represent the range uh, that related to y. Okay. What this mean? Let us do an example here. So, experiment is to attach a photo detector to an optical fiber and count the number of photons arriving in one microsecond time interval. Each observation is a random variable x. So, the range start from 0, 1, 2 and so on. Okay. 
in this case sx the range of x and the sample space s are identical okay uh, for example uh, another example to understand this random variable so you have uh, uh, experiment is to test six integrated circuits. So, why we need random variable? This example help us to understand this concept. Look here, uh, there are six tests we have to perform, and each test is acceptable or rejected. So, if you know that, uh, so and after each test observe whether the circuit is acceptable or rejected. Each observation is a sequence of six letter, where each letter is either A or R. For example, this is an outcome written that uh, first two, this one, okay, this one. First two are acceptable, then third is rejected, then remaining is also acceptable. So, uh, if you look at uh, if you want to make the sample space so there are 64 outcomes why 64 anyone because it becomes uh, let me do here because um, this is example there are Six integrated circuit tests. Okay. Each with accept or reject. This implies that two power six. Okay. So, it becomes 64 outcomes. So, it is very difficult to write 64 outcomes. Okay. So, what we do here, we represent these 64 outcomes using a random variable n. Okay. So, for example, we, we can define n is the number of acceptable circuits are or for rejectable. So, for example, very easy if we define n as a random variable which is equal to number of acceptable ICs okay r is uh, number of uh, rejected ICs so these n and r becomes the random variable so this means that if I have to look at because there are six circuits, so n can have zero acceptable, one circuit is acceptable out of six, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's very easy to write the outcome. So that's why this is the reason we normally uh, represent our outcomes in terms of random variable. So similarly. I can write um, uh, R random variable, R again no rejected, 1 rejected, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, this will uh, motivate us why we need um, random variable representation. So, for example, um, if we extend that example where we test the circuits and you know that whenever we have a successful circuit that give us some profit and when there is a rejected uh, circuit that uh, make uh, a cost on the company. So, assume that the net revenue, revenue obtained for a batch of 6 integrated circuit is 5 dollar. Okay. So, you have 6 circuits and you get revenue around 5 dollar for each circuit accepted minus 
7 dollar for e circuit rejected so means that uh, if uh, e circuit is acceptable and you have how many circuit uh, how many uh, circuits uh, six circuits so uh, you get uh, five times of that acceptable circuits as a revenue okay but if uh, some circuit is rejected then you have your revenue is minus 7 dollar so for each circuit except is 5 dollar otherwise minus 7 dollar so in that case for uh, assume that we have n represented the number of acceptable circuits what about the non acceptable circuit is 6 minus n if uh, n is 1 then non acceptable is 5 or rejected is 5 similarly if n is 6 rejected is 0 so that's why we come up with that uh, the remaining circuit is n minus 6 so to calculate the revenue we make another revenue is also a random variable why because it has the um, uh, function of a random variable n so uh, revenue is also a random variable okay mm -hmm. which is based on n so look here 5 times the acceptable circuits that is n minus 7 times the non acceptable set that is 6 minus n so in that case this becomes 2n minus 12 dollar now since uh, we have 0 6 so we can easily calculate the range of um, revenue or we get when we have acceptable or non acceptable circuit so if we put n is equal to 0 here so we have minus 42 again when we put uh, n is equal to 1 we have minus 30 so this is the range we are getting similarly we have the maximum revenue is the 30 dollar because this means that all the circuits are accepted so this is the range we we get from this uh, random variable so that's why random variables are very uh, useful for representation of the experiment outcomes so now is the definition what is the random variable now random variable consists of an experiment with probability measures defined on a sample space s and a function that assign a real number to each outcome in the sample space of the experiment so what is the random variable random variable actually assign a real number to the outcomes is known as random variable if you assign a real number to the outcomes of the experiment you call it as a random variable if this number is discrete we call it a discrete random variable if this is a continuous we call it as a continuous random variable so the basic idea in random variable is to assign the real number for example uh, let's uh, do an example here example example is that um, if we say that um, mm, flip two coins and count number of heads okay so you have two coins and if i make the sample space of two coins uh, either we have both heads either we have one head second tail either we have first tail second head either we have both tails so this is the outcomes if we define a random variable x and we say that x is defined as number of heads so this becomes a random variable okay so now x uh, s power x contains 2 1 1 0 so it becomes 0 1 2 this becomes a random variable clear now let's um, 
we can make a table to represent this. And look here, we have uh, outcome head and head. Now here x is 2, here x is 1, x is 1, 0. Now the outcome, because these are outcomes are equally likely, so there are 4 outcomes. So each outcome has a probability 1 by 4, by 4, 1 by 4 and 1 by 4. Now let us uh, write the probability of, uh, if I ask you to write the probability of x is equal to 0. So, for x is 0, how many outcomes we have? Only one outcome, t t. So, this becomes 1 by 4. What are the probability when x is equal to 1? So, it contains two outcomes, that is h t and t h. What is the probability? We have to add these two. Okay, so it becomes one by four plus one by four. It becomes two by four becomes one by two. Similarly, what is the probability when x is equal to two? Again, probability is one by four. So this is the way you can use the random variable to calculate the probability. I will stop here. Uh, we will continue this further in coming lecture.